How you doing? Arthur Scott. Here to continue with going through Teach Yourself to Read the Hebrew Alphabet by Simon and Anderson. I'm going to add three more letters and one vowel symbol to, I think this is lesson five if I'm not mistaken. It'll be listed right when I upload it, but <clears throat> I didn't want to skip too many days between videos because that means I'm not practicing how I should be. But as I said before, learning, if you know the language, comment below and help me get it together. <laughs> but today, I'll be adding, uh, oh, this might be lesson six. <laughs> Yeah, this is lesson six. Maybe. Anyway, um, I'm adding the cough. Not the calf, but the cough. K-O-F, as it is written in my book. And it gives off the K as in kitten. I think that would be our second letter, maybe third letter given that sound. And it looks like a P. That little interesting... I don't know why it reminds me of Egyptian symbols, but cough. K as in kitten. Cough. The next letter I'll give is the tsad. Sad. Tz. Tz. It actually is T-S as in the end of the word nuts sad looks like a Y looks like a Y uh, that's really all I can say about it sad that's just the way I picture pronouncing it the next letter moving along would be the pay 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 F as in food, pay. And there's two pays, one with a dot in the center. Don't confuse the dot with the hook that is actually part of the letter, but the dot in the center actually makes that a P as in people. Both consider the letter pay. With the dot, P. Without the dot, F. Pay. Quick recap before I go into the book for the example, because I didn't write them down by hand. Get this crap out of the way. <clears throat> Cough. Tsad. T. T. A T S sound. Pay. Without the dot. F, as in food. With the dot, I'm going to get in closer because I drew it by hand. P, as in people. Without dot, with dot. And don't worry, I'm going to go to the book for example. <clears throat> to recap on the vowel signatures I've given, the A is a horizontal line or the T signature underneath the consonant. The X represents any consonant that. The double E, the strong extended E sound, is represented by a dot and a comment, comma, under and on side of the consonant, or just the dot itself. The long E, as in B, hold. The next consonant, consonant. <laughs> The next vowel signature is the double dot underneath the consonant, sometimes with a comma to kind of give off that A, that Y, the Yod, the Y sound. But the double dot underneath the consonant represents the A sound, as in sitting on the dock of the bay sound. Right here, underneath the consonant we have the it reminds me of bowling pins but it's just three dots 
and that gives you the small e sound, as in bed. Bed. Now, the new one I'm giving is <clears throat> it's either a dot over the consonant or next to the consonant will be what looks like a vibe with the dot over it. And I'll show another example in the book since I wrote this by hand. But either the dot directly over the left hand side of the consonant or next to the consonant itself being the vav symbol with the dot over it will give us the pronunciation of the le of the vowel o o o and as an example i have l plus the vav signature with the dot over it equals low reading from this side to that side i'm sorry backwards this word down here is from that side in english reading in hebrew is the opposite so here is your l drawn by hand <laughs> going into the vav vav with the dot over it giving us the l Oh, low. Get low. Little John would be proud. Yin Yang Twins. <laughs> he got it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> but just a little exercise here they had in the book. I'll go right there just to show you. They want you to circle the letters or the symbols that match the letter that is in the box. So here we have the K. Bam. So in this row, what would give us the K sound? K as in kitten. K as in kitten. That would be the but that would also be the calf. K A F K O F. Comment below, please. Or they just have multiple letters that make the same sound, which makes sense because I know about Hebrew captivity, Babylon, uh, Assyria. Pretty sure there was some Roman stuff happening, so Lord knows what happened to the language. <clears throat> but back to that K. So now that you know what to look for, gave you a hint. That would be a K. This would be a B. That's a bet. Here's another K. So that's the K-O-F, the K. The one we just learned. Here is a gamel. The L, I believe it's the lamed. Yep. Lamed. Another cough. K as in kitten. And here, it's a little blurry from my point of view, but I believe that's a Zion, a Z. Turn around, and yes, it is. Zion. And here, though it looks like a calf, which it kind of is, but it doesn't have the dot. So therefore, it's the CH as in Bach. <laughs> Bach. So slightly different. We're playing those games in this language. Just to move on for fun. in your face, huh? I'm going to the next line. They want things that match the P. The P. The cough wouldn't, because that's a K as in kitten. The tet wouldn't, 
because that's a T, as in tall. But right here, hmm, hmm, that looks like the pay. And different from, sorry, my finger, this pay, this pay, if you can see slowly, that's why I drew it on paper, it has a dot in the middle, therefore making it a P instead of a F. Now this being the shin, we could just skip over it. Shin, that's an F because we just talked about it. And here is another tet because I think I see that kickstand. Yes, I do. That is a tet, T as in tall. Here, if I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna turn around a second. I'm gonna say is another pay with the dot making it a P. And from here, I think that's a mem, but I'm gonna double check this one second. Pay has the dot in the middle. It is a P. P. Now I can go over all the letters and play that game. But, um. Oh, it looks like they have another read and enjoy the dialogue. So. We'll do this together. <clears throat> Excuse me. With this whistle. All right. Sorry for the brief interruption. All right. I don't want to start off backwards and just really be out of place. So where my finger is supposed to be but here we have a mem with the horizontal line I'm gonna get as close as I as humanly possible you know what I'm quick stressing myself with the zoom button what you know about it all right so starting from this side and reading in this direction let me get me Pins for pointers. We are reading above that pen. Get my hand out the way, creating a shadow. So here we have a mem with a horizontal line making the ah sound. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> this being the H carrying on the ah, so ma ah. Ma ah. Ma ah. So as far as my comprehension, we have a pen that ain't writing, and that's the perfect time. So we'll just remember what that said ma. Ma, that's a S with the bowling ball triple dots under it, making it the soft E sound. Ma s e. That's a dalid. Ma said. Ma said. Ma said. Let's turn it around and see what Ma said. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> That's a H with a singular dot giving the he. That is a yod giving the yi. And that is a zayin giving the z sound. So, ma said he's silent with a double dot being the a. A. So mom, ma said he's A. Hmm. I'm wondering about mama now. S E. Yay. That's a yod, so yeah. C ya. Ni. Yeah. Okay, I'm turning that around, sir. <laughs> He's a C, yeah, 
Ni. Yeah. See me? See? Yin. See? Say? See me? I don't know. I don't know. See? There's a yod. That's a N with a. So that's a singular dot making it an E. C, knee, carrying on that line. Oh, I'm so stupid. Stupid. Not stupid, just misinformed in the language. But that's not an S. That's an M. That's a mem. I'm sorry, people. So, ma, said, said, ma said, He's a me knee. Mom said he's a meanie. Pa, P, with the horizontal line under it, with the H to carry on the sound. Pa, S, E, D. Sorry, I turn around. And see, oh, okay. Okay, that left to right thing is aggravating. I swear. So that's an N with the vibe with a dot. No. So Pa said no. Paw, oh shoot, this left or right crap, I swear. Pa, s, ed, n, with the vibe with the dot making the O. Pa said no. He, with the Y, ye, with the Z, he's, n, a, with the horizontal line under the N. With the tet. Pa said, No, he's not. A. Knee. Knee. And we can go all day, but apparently, Pops and Moms is calling each other mean. Or, or Mom thinks Pops and Meanie. Pop disagrees. He thinks he's a reasonable man. We can read that much of the backing and forthing. Just like the last one, when Betty ate cheese and Bob ate Betty cheese. And then you can see Betty beat Bob. So we can reverse those words back and forth. But hopefully that is a short understanding. Practice only makes purpose. Practice only makes perfect. And I'm gonna go over Pretty much all the letters really fast since I'm right here. Lesson one was bet, B as in boy. I already went through all the vowels, so you should leave me alone about that. We have the shin, which is the W with the dot over the right hand side. Double check in my left and right. We have the tet. Notice the kickstand. T as in tall. Lesson two, the letter Dalid, D as in dog. We got another version of the bet without the dot, supposedly V as in vine, but we already talked about the B, V change and interchanging in certain languages. We have the Gamel, which is the G as in girl, the G, G. We have an Aleph, silent letter. Therefore, any vowel signature underneath that silent letter should be pronounced as if it were the letter itself. Lesson three consisted of the hey, H. <sighs> then we had another version of the vav, V as in vine. 
than the Zayin, which looks like the Vav slightly. But notice it comes out on both sides. Zayin, Z as in zebra. And here, the Chet, that famous kh sound that we all know and love. Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach. Last but not least, least we have another on this page the tet another version of the tet t as in tall moving on to lesson four where we were giving the yod y the kaf k k a f k as in kitten we have another kaf k a f bach giving off the ch as in bach we have the Lamed, the L symbol, which, now that I'm thinking about it, it kind of looks like an L, but I'm a good plan. Mm. Under that is a Mem, Mem, M as in mother. The next lesson, the silent letter, the Ayin was given, just like the Aleph, any vowel signature given under the letter should be pronounced as if the vowel signature is the letter itself. Here we have the N, and I didn't draw that very well, but it's called the nun. N as in noun, now, or noun, either one. S as in sun. Looks like a circle with a horn, singular horn. That's just my opinion. And that's that vowel sound for bed. And today, we gave the letters, bam, we gave the F, K-A-F. My dog is having some digestion issues right now. Something's in there. He's going to get it up. I know y'all hear that. K as in kitten. Cough. We have the side. Side. The T-S sound, as in the end of the word, nuts. Tsad. Here we have pay or the two pays. Ha, no pun intended. The pay, without the dot, gives us the F as in food. And the pay with the dot gives us the P as in people. The newest vowel signature that we haven't gone over before but have today is either the dot over the left hand side of the consonant giving us the O sound or we have next to the consonant itself what looks to be a vowel with a dot directly over it giving us the O sound. Example, L plus the vav with the dot over it. I'm sorry, I'm saying L like that's the L. Lamed equaling L plus the vav with the dot over it equaling the O sound gives us what would be in the American terminology. Low. Shout out to the Yang Yang twins. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, that is. Simon and Anderson, teach yourself to read Hebrew, or read the Hebrew alphabet. As far as the book's concerned, we are on lesson six. More in the future. Bam. Forgot I had it zoomed. Bam. There we go. Here I am, there you are. Peace, we out. Y'all have a good one.